Hey, Andy here. A couple years ago, I put out a blog post and a video about how to simply install Rancher RKE2 and Longhorn. Well, I've been asked a few times about updating it. Here it is. So recently, I just went and updated the GitHub page. Again, this will be in the show notes, and I'm going to go through this so you'll be able to, to kind of play along with me. Uh, but what I did is I've updated, I've added new vector to it, and I've updated it using some of the newer software and cleaned up a few things, as well as I'm using a newer version of Ubuntu, 2204. This works in Rocky, this works in RHEL, this works in 2404, but for this use case, I'm using 2204. Uh, shout out to Durden on that one. Uh, okay, so let's kind of get started. So again, like I said, I've updated it. There's all new. There's a new vector section now. Let's actually just walk through it because I think that's going to be the easiest thing to do. For this guide, I've created three VMs in Harvester just because it's easy. I've got my new home lab, and I'm going to go ahead and use it. Okay, so I've got my first node, which is 112. So let me go ahead and SSH into that. You will need SSH to log into all these nodes. Okay, so there's a one, let's log into O2. And my security keys, yay. And then we'll log into O3. Now, ironically, I actually built this, did my, la uh, built out the, updated the, the blog, brain fart this morning, happy Tuesday. Um, ran through this once already and notice it's getting me cert issues because it was actually pretty cool. I ran this about half an hour ago. I'm running it again, built all new VMs, and we can see that it, it gave me the exact same IPs as in the blog post, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I've got my three nodes. And, and real simply, right, we're creating a three-node cluster, four core, eight gigs of RAM, and the first node's gonna be the control plane node, the first node's gonna be the uh, effectively the server, and then the other two are gonna be the workers, and it'll just make a lot of sense. So, because we're using Ubuntu, we don't need to worry about the rel. We're going to copy and paste the instructions. This is just going to disable the software firewall, do an update, change, and add and remove a bunch of things. So, we're going to do it on three, two, and one. Yes, there are a lot of tools out there to automate this. I use a tool called TSSHX, which is an old one. There's uh, iTerm can do. There's just a couple of tools. But because it's only three nodes, and I only have to in a, to type in a very few set of commands on two and three, makes it easy to go ahead and just do it manually. So we'll go ahead, okay, on this one, this is for the kernel updates, I guess. Cool, done. Now we can go ahead and do the RKE, RKE2 install. This is actually really easy, similar as before, it's gonna be a curl pipe batch. This time we're not gonna pin it to a specific version. We're gonna take advantage of the latest. Uh, I do recommend checking out the support matrix and there's a link in here for down under the rancher section around the support matrix. Check out the support matrix just to make sure which version you want to install. And there's some install options here, I'll click that. There's some install options here where you can set the specific version or you can set the channel or the method, right? So you've got a couple different options there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and curl pipe bash. This is on rancher 01, this is on the, the, the first node. And then we're gonna enable the server. So we can literally just copy that, go to one, paste it in. Okay, while that's running, uh, show you kind of what it looks like and what to expect. And we'll see that it is actively running. When that comes up, we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a symbolic link for the kubectl command. That way we don't have to install it separately. RKE2 does install it when you do the curl pipe bash. Then we're gonna export the kube config and source our bash RC. So that way if we log out and log back in, kubectl will still be there as well as the reference for <clears throat> for the, the kube config to talk to RKE2. And then we'll get a node. Yep, perfect, that came up. And we'll go ahead and run that and we can see it's not ready yet. Again, that was the symbolic link. And then we told it where it was and you notice it installed 34, uh, 1.30.4. That is the latest as of today. And by the way, just a little side shout out. I, I did write a site called dzver.rfed. This will tell you all the latest versions of everything there. New Vector's been posting some weird stuff to, uh, to GitHub, so that's why it's not kind of playing nice. But the big ones here is K3S, RKE2, and Rancher. Okay, I'll put this in the show notes, just that way you can follow along. And let's make sure our first node is ready. Yep, our first node is ready in 41 seconds. Cool. 
we've got our first server node on our cluster. Now, all we have to do now is do sir, uh, node two and three. The good news is, it's relatively simple. And I wrote a little tiny, it's almost like a script, but it's not, but it is, but it's not. All you have to do is change this IP address for this export rancher to your IP of the first node. It's that rancher01 node IP address. Now in this case, it's super easy. I can literally just copy and paste this. We will run this on uh, nodes two and three, worker, worker two and three. Again, it's curl pipe bash, but this time it's an agent type. We're gonna make the directory, give it the config. Now, one of the main deltas from the last version to this version is instead of going and letting it create the uh, config token, we went and go ahead and we set it. It just simplifies a few steps. It's something that that it's six of one half dozen of the other. Uh, I've been doing it in my workshops for a while with no issue. So let's just go with it. So okay, we'll copy that. We'll go to server two or worker two, agent two, and then number three, same kind of thing. And this will take a minute or two. Uh, should be relatively quick if we go back here. Yeah, let's do something fancy. Uh, we'll watch that. And there we go. So it's server two is already checked in. It's already starting. Once the command prop comes back, you can actually just close the tab. You do not need to connect in. And I'll just exit out because I like having two open. Cool. Number three is coming in now. So that was relatively easy, right? Three node cluster in a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, let's say five. We'll round up. Okay. While that's finishing coming online, again, we can take a look at what it looks like. Let's go to Rancher. Oh, there's the support matrix link. And for 291, it's saying the highest version of RKE2 is V130, which we're doing, perfect. So we'll go ahead and install 291. Okay, those, we don't have to wait for that one to come ready. To install Rancher, we're gonna use Helm. If you're not familiar, it's a kind of a great level of uh, layer of abstraction, makes it really easy to install applications uh, at scale. What we're gonna do is first, we're gonna install the Helm binary, and this is all on server one again. We, we're pretty much not gonna touch three. In fact, you can tell I've already logged out of it. And cool, we're ready, ready, ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install Helm, and then we're going to do a Helm repo install of the rancher upstream and the what's called jet stack. So that's our cert manager. The reason why we're using that is because we're using self-signed certs. If we had legitimate certs, you wouldn't need cert manager and you would just tell rancher on the helm install, here's the secret for my certs. That's for another video. In fact, I do have a video for that. There's a link at the bottom of this page that'll take you to all of my videos. And there's one there about uh, certs. I just made that like two weeks ago, a week ago, which is pretty cool. Okay. So we have the repos installed and we have Helm installed. We can do Helm repo list to show you that I've got them both installed. Now what we can do is do the Helm install for uh, Jetstack, AKA cert manager. Now this one's interesting. This one will actually wait until the pods come active. So if this takes a minute, two minute and a half, two minutes, don't be alarmed. It does take that long because again, it's waiting for them to become active. Uh, while that's running, let's go ahead and take a look at Rancher. So I'm just resetting this export again for that IP address. And then what I'm doing is on the Rancher install, I'm, I'm creating the cattle system namespace and we're using SSLIP for DNS services. Before I had you create one or is docker.life or awesome sauce or whatever. This one is actually pretty cool because whatever IP you put in here, it'll re SSLIP.io will reply back Back here, I'll show you. This is the, we've been using this in our labs for quite some time and it works really well. It's just a way of labeling domains pretty simply. Okay. Because of that, oh, and we're setting the password. So, and replica. So what we'll do is we'll just copy those couple, those two lines and we'll actually do the Helm install for Rancher. Now notice it came right back. Okay, not a problem. What we can do now is kube microphone CTO get a pod and we can see that we've got all our kube system we've got our cert manager and the containers creating for rancher right now we do need to wait for that to come active uh, so we can do something like watch so we can watch the cattle system we can see it's running uh, while that's running we can look at all the ingress objects and notice our ingress object gives us the name of rancher with that ip.slip.io. I'll run this one more time. 
So we're fully up and running and we should start to see some other stuff come up. The nice thing about it is now we can actually go to the URL. Notice we're getting a privacy error because again, we're using those self-signed certs. We can hit advanced. This is in Chrome and Firefox will look different or Safari, whatever you're using. Um, we're going to first get to the kind of password page and noticed we use the password bootstrap all the things. So we can go ahead and type that in and I'll show that and log in with local user, confirm the IP. I always uncheck anonymous stats. That's up to you. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We go ahead and continue. So really in the span of about 10 minutes, we now have RKE2 installed on three nodes. We have Rancher installed version 291. This is the absolute latest that came out. This is September 3rd, <laughs> September 3rd. Uh, and that, like I said, this is the absolute latest. Everything's up and running. We're good to go. And you can see that it's already, Rancher's already started to play other things. Okay, cool. We have Rancher fully up and running. One of the things we can take a look at, and I've, I've got this automatically in light mode. Uh, you can go to preferences and switch to dark mode if you want. I like light mode for presenting. I think it looks better. Uh, in terms of navigating around, I'll give you real quick. Uh, on the left, one of the major additions is now you can see all your different clusters. So if you add clusters, you'll get icons here. We have the local cluster. This is the one we're working on running, like I said, on Harvester locally. We've got applications. This is our app catalog. You can start to drill in. We've also got cluster management. So if you wanted to take this a step further, you could actually use the cluster management and talking to Harvester itself. We could configure this to talk to the Harvester underneath and we could then actually kind of automatically with our continuous delivery tools, deploy downstream clusters on Harvester as well. It's really, really kind of good integration and uh, kind of really simplifies a lot of, of things uh, for an admin, which is cool. Okay, so let's keep moving on. I wanna make this video not super long. Uh, Longhorn, let's go ahead and install Longhorn. So we have kind of a two ways to do it. We can go to apps, we can go down here to the Longhorn install, or we can use the command line like we've been using. I like doing that because it allows me to independently control the applications from the, um, you know, from the underlying rancher version. So again, similar Helm, get chart, uh, Helm create the, the repo and then add the chart itself. And we'll go ahead and create that. One of the other great things talking about integration is that notice uh, if we go back here in a minute, we'll see a, a nav link here pop up called Longhorn. And this will give us, uh, go ahead and refresh the page. Yep, notice Longhorn popped up. The nice thing about this is because Rancher understands what Longhorn is, understands what New Vector is, and will allow us to automatically create the links for it. And there we go, now it's up and running. So just like that, right? A simple install. And this would, you would still get that same nav link if you went through the app catalog. Uh, again, I like doing it just to decouple it a little bit from the Rancher version and the Longhorn version and potentially the new Vector version. Okay, awesome. It's up and running. And oh, by the way, notice that we're proxying through Rancher to get to Longhorn. Okay, so I'm regged into to Rancher that allows me to get to Longhorn. We can do this for single sign-on for new Vector. We can hide services, hide. We can protect services behind that reg wall. Okay, or we can expose Longhorn, I can expose on the main network with an ingress. I can do the same thing with New Vector. And in fact, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much of an app and things like that, but on New Vector, we're gonna do a similar thing, right? We're gonna go ahead and do uh, Helm repo add. I'm just resetting the IP again, just for double for, for giggles. But here we're actually saying uh, manager ingress host equals, and it's a similar new vector S slip. So go ahead and copy that and paste that in. Okay. And now that's running, uh, while that's installing this kubectl, let me show you another kind of really neat in integration. If you go here, we're looking at our local cluster. I have this button up here called kubectl shell or the tilde key. This is going to give me based on my credentials. So I'm logged in as an admin. If I was logged in as user, I have that same level of authorization as for our back. Whoop. Come on, you can do it. Um, you'd have the same shell. For some reason, it's not pulling the shell. I wonder what's going on. 
I use this quite often. Get pod. It says it's running. I wonder why it's having an issue. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. Oh, it rekeyed. That's why. It does that. That's one of the downsides of having uh, of having a, a self signed cert is that it will rekey occasionally. So refreshing the screen and notice new vectors there. And now I bet you if I hit tilde, yeah, see it says connecting and go. There we go. So kube CTL get pod and you notice it's the same cluster. Right, same node, same three cluster, same three nodes, right? So this is kind of a cool way to kind of interact with Rancher. And again, that integration really kind of kind of helps uh, speed things up and makes things nice. So cool, we were talking about new vector, talking about the integration. So let's go and take a look at new vector. So I hear I can go in through the proxy and I'll show you what the proxy looks like. Or what I can do is I like on the blog, the install blog, I can actually just click the link and when is, yep, there you go. And again, self sign cert, approve it, same new vector. Now, because we're going in this way, it's admin, admin. Okay, and done. All right, so what I recommend you do, oh, one more last thing. Assets, containers, make sure you enable auto scan. This will start scanning all of your images, all of the containers running for CVEs. It's kind of a nice to have, okay? That's the last thing we need to do. What I recommend you do now, in fact, you can see through the docs and we can automate this. We did it, tough kid. Um, what I recommend you do is go through, we'll refresh Longhorn, take a look at some of the nodes and volumes, start poking through some of the tabs in Longhorn, poke through some of the tabs in New Vector, poke through some of the tabs in Rancher, take a look at potentially storage or apps, see what else in terms of the app catalog is here. Um, I would highly recommend installing the monitoring stack Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Oh, look at that. Cerberus now has, looks like a Halloween icon. Cool. Uh, hope this, if you find this useful, helpful, subscribe. Uh, feel free to comment if there's anything else you'd like to see. Any other applications you'd like to see installed. And hopefully this is pretty easy and approachable. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye. What was that? Oh, that's my screen. Okay, now I'm leaving. Bye.